Hi people, this is son of Jadda with this month's comic book edition, comic book talk edition. Behind me you can see the replica of Avengers Tower in Jadda. Anyways, uh, this month's comic book talk I wanted to uh, share my knowledge concerning a comic book legend who recently passed away. His name was Steve Ditko and uh, he in the Marvel Universe he co-created the amazing Spider-Man and Doctor Strange. Steve Ditko was a comic book artist he has written some stories as well he has uh, created characters for DC Comics for Charlton Comics but because uh, I'm a huge fan of both of uh, these characters, Spider-Man and uh, Doctor Strange. So I'll keep my discussion limited uh, uh, to these two characters. Uh, Steve's art, uh, as you can see from my timeline or the post that I've shared, uh, you can see the, 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 the unique drawing style uh, that was there. Jack Kirby uh, on the other hand, his counterpart, who was also in Marvel back in the 60s and then later returned in the late 70s, his approach was totally different. It was, uh, Jack Kirby was about uh, creating, I don't know, I'm a bit weak on these artistic terminologies, but I mean, it would seem like his images were actually coming out of the comic book covers or the comic book pages that he was drawing uh, his aesthetic sense was quite uh, quite unique and beautiful I mean if you look at his drawings for uh, the invisible woman fantastic force invisible woman I think the best ever uh, invisible woman that was drawn was by Kirby uh, and many other characters his drawings for Captain America his drawings for Fantastic Four overall Kirby was able to capture a more futuristic world uh, if you're looking at 2001 Odyssey if you're looking at uh, these characters the Eternals and their very sophisticated futuristic technologically advanced world uh, Kirby was the man who was depicting what a sci-fi future would look like. I, I don't know if the word ideally fits in, but anyhow. Now, coming back to Ditko. Ditko, the way he portrayed Spider-Man or the way he portrayed Doctor Strange, his uh imagine imagination about the character was more in tune with the reality of the time you do not find uh ditko spider-man to be looking like a hero from hollywood just like john romita's peter parker or john romita's spider-man he simply looks like an ideal superhero uh, the way it used to be during the 60s. Tedco was able to capture uh, the physique, the attitude, the, the expressions of a teenage struggling uh, at high school, going through typical teenage issues and then at the same time being bitten by a radioactive spider. I still remember because my first experience uh, of Ditko art came uh, when I bought uh, Marvel Tales. Marvel Tales uh, was a title by Marvel Comics and it continued till uh, 1984 or the late 80s if I remember it correctly. So du during the time, uh, during the 80s, Marvel Tales was reprinting uh, Spider-Man stories from the 60s especially the stories that were written by Stan Lee and drawn by Steve Ditko and the two 
Marvel Tales uh, titles that I had bought. Unfortunately, I don't have them anymore. Th that was my first experience of Steve Ritko art. And to this day, I still remember each and every panel. And thanks to Google, now you can find a lot of them, most of them in fact. Uh, but I still remember those two comic books, the fighting scenes. Uh, in fact, there was one scene where, uh, uh, in the panel where B Betty Brandt, who used to uh, be an initial love interest for Spider-Man before Gwen Stacy and before Mary Jane, uh, she and uh, Peter Parker break up. So there is this moment where Peter is actually, you know, depressed feeling down, feeling frustrated uh, because of the because of the developments that are taking place in his life, whether positive or negative. And although in his case, it was mostly negative. And there was a scene whereby, you know, he captures that moment where uh, Betty Brand calls it quits. And then a sad, dismayed Peter, Peter Parker uh, walks towards the park or some place and he is uh, holding on to a brick wall a small uh, waist high brick wall and he is like you know getting angry getting bitter slightly and in that moment he accidentally crushes the two bricks the two pieces of bricks with his bare hands and it, I was five years old back then, five or six. And of course, a five, six year old back in the 80s was not expected to be reading through the entire comic book because uh, in, in my age, I was more about, you know, those cool pictures of Spider-Man flying here, flying there, punching the bad guy and everything. But that scene, to this day is part of my memory and up till the point I had this comic with me or these two comics with me because the other one was about uh, Scorpion and this one I'm talking about I think this was about uh, the Beetle and uh, the, 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 this one had a guest appearance by the Human Torch from the Fantastic Four as well and uh, you know th those Th th those th those drawings by Steve Ditko were simply amazing. I mean, from the front page to the last, Steve Ditko's impact cannot be explained in words. The stories are phenomenal. They established a solid foundation of uh, the character Doctor Strange, who is now being played by Benedict Cumberbatch. A legendary actor uh, unfortunately the movie is not up to the mark uh, as Doctor Strange stories are and the way Doctor Strange character has been portrayed has been quite disappointing in my opinion despite the fact that one of the greatest actors in the world is playing that role anyways so uh, you know exploring the unseen world as in Arabic it's called Alim Al Ghaib uh, through his own imagination and putting it out on a pencil uh, on a paper it's just mind blowing all of us have a different level of imagination altogether but to be able to imagine the unseen is one thing but to be able to show it in the form of a drawing so with all the imperfections yet making it look so mesmerizing so beautiful is just is just uh, how can I say where's the star tower yeah okay Avengers Tower so it's just I can't think of a better word it's just beautiful Steve Ditko, rest in peace. You gave us a lot of wonderful memories. Some of us weren't there in the 60s, but we were able to experience your art uh, through reprints. And 
for a guy like me who represents uh, the generation from the 80s who grew up in the 80s who started reading comic books in the 80s you gave us a lot of good memories thanks to your art thank you sir